under the windows the low burn and concrete are in the 12 years down. since willingham's conviction one fact had remained unquestioned the fire was an arson burn patterns unusual to a normal fire burn but during those years there had been a dramatic change in the science of arson investigation the fire investigation community largely consists of people who are firemen. They're not scientists. They don't have any formal scientific training. Extinguishing a fire and investigating a fire involve two different skill sets and two different mindsets. John Lentini is at the top of his field, one of a small group who reinvented the science of arson detection. So many determinations were based on hunches and feelings. And, and these guys, they talk about, oh, you got to get in there and feel the beast. Uh, oh, it, I, I'm just embarrassed for the profession that this is the way people evaluate physical evidence. The change in arson science began when scientists set their own fires and studied how they burned. That was the first time science was ever really introduced into the mainstream of fire investigation. Like Lentini, Dr. Gerald Hurst was one of the new fire scientists. Gerald Hurst is a chemist extraordinaire with a PhD from Cambridge University. He's the idiosyncratic godfather of modern arson science. He's like this mad scientist who's not mad at all. For years, Willingham's supporters had tried to enlist Hurst's help. They finally gave him the state's arson report only weeks before the scheduled execution. Taking a look at the photographs and video and testimony and fire investigation report, it became apparent that uh, we were dealing with a fire which had gone to flashover. Flashover, the instant ignition of all combustible material in a room. Flashover had left natural patterns on the floor that all post-flashover fires tend to leave behind, and these had been misidentified as pore patterns, and thus the fire had been labeled an arson. Hearst reviewed the report line by line. All right, here's your f first bit of so-called arson evidence. This was typically interpreted in the old days as a pore pattern, in other words, someone poured get gasoline or some other accelerant down the hallway out the front door and then ignited it the prosecutor in this case literally believed that the burn patterns on the floor were in the shape of a pentagram like some satanic ritual when you actually look at the burn pattern that they drew and then you look at where the windows are windows furnish ventilation to a fire and all they were looking at is what we call ventilation patterns. The original arson investigators had testified that there was evidence of a liquid accelerant on the threshold of the porch door. A sample of wood debris from the base of the front porch was analyzed, and the results were positive for a combustible liquid accelerant-kerosene. Well, that's quite understandable because the porch also had a barbecue on it. And of course, it would be charcoal lighter fluid there if there was a can of charcoal lighter fluid on the porch. Hearst also addressed Willingham's lack of injuries. The question has been asked, why were Todd Willingham's feet not burned? And the answer to that question is quite simple. Because if no accelerant was poured on the floor, the floor would have been relatively cool until shortly after flashover occurred in the bedroom. The last part of him that would have gotten any burn would have been his feet. And Hearst concluded the original investigators had not eliminated accidental causes. There had to be at least one electrical short in that room. And since it was surface wiring, it would have been relative child's play to simply trace it, get a step ladder, and trace it and go over it inch by inch. Until you, until you locate the fault. That in and of itself is enough to toss the case out for arson. 
Hearst had come to believe Todd Willingham was not guilty. Todd Willingham's case falls into that category where there is not one iota of evidence that the fire was arson. Not, not one iota. Hearst completed his report on February 13th, 2004, only four days before the scheduled execution. Yeah, all hope was lost and we now have the answer. 